Hi, I built this battery pack about seven years ago, and I have been using it quite often to power my inverters and other tools. You probably have seen me using it in some of my videos here and there. It worked pretty well, but the original BMS I had on it required a separate charging port, which is not very convenient. So I thought I would swap out the BMS with a better one. The original BMS I got was rated for 100 amps, but the balancing current was quite low. I can't remember the exact number, but I actually modified it so it could handle higher balancing current. And after that hack, this BMS actually worked quite well for me. Anyway, if you're interested in learning the modification I did, I will leave a link to my original post on my website in the video description below. Now, since the battery pack is already 7 years old, and now I have a few proper LFP batteries, I will most likely just use this battery for some low current applications. So for that, I just bought a 60 amps 4S Dali BMS. The main reason I bought this one is that it looks pretty decent and has protective cover, and it was fairly inexpensive. Now, I could have bought a 100 amps BMS, but it would be a lot more expensive, and I wasn't willing to pay more than $20 for a BMS for this rather old battery pack. Well, enough talking, let me remove the old BMS and swap in this new one. I think I'm going to open this up off camera as there's just not enough space on the workbench here. Here is the BMS and here is the separate charging port I mentioned earlier. Well, as you can clearly see, I didn't spend much on this battery build. It was mainly just a fun project for me. Those who build batteries for a living are probably going to laugh at this. But hey, it has been working great, and that's what it counts. Before I disassemble further, I just want to show you how this battery bank was originally built. The batteries I used in this build are 32650s, and these are 5 amp hour cells. And as you can see here, I essentially have 20 of these in parallel, and then we'll have 4 banks of these that forms the 12.8 volts final output voltage. Let's actually take a look at how well the original BMS balances these batteries. I actually haven't checked that for a long time, so I don't actually know. So let's see this. The first bank, 3.511, second, 20 millivolts difference already. Okay, the third one. Definitely there's some discrepancies. And the last one here. So you can see that they are actually not balanced that well. There's almost a 30 millivolts difference between the top bank and the bottom bank. But overall, I think it served its purpose. This thing has been working for the past seven years without a problem. So let me just remove the BMS and we'll solder on the new one. All right, I had to swap the BMS off camera and also I have to charge out the battery. Now let's do a capacity test. Now the load testing is done. I let this thing run overnight and did not catch the moment where the cutoff occurred. But actually it pulled a 99.7 amp hour. So this is not bad for a seven year old battery that had been used and abused. Now, unfortunately I didn't do a full capacity testing when I initially built the battery. So I don't know what the degradation number looks like. But for a battery that has been constantly used for the past seven years, I don't think this is a bad result. All right, let me charge it up so we can do a few more testing. And now you can see I'm using the power supply back there to charge the battery, and the charging current is set at 10 amps. So I'll wait a while till the battery is sufficiently charged and we can do more experiments. And by the way, during the discharging test, the BMS actually stayed pretty cool during the entire time, and that's because I suspect the current is relatively low. Later on, we'll do some experiments to see when the battery is under load, what the BMS temperature looks like. I charged the battery for about 20 minutes. That should give us enough juice for the next test. And the BMS is rated for 60 amps. So in this test, I'm going to try to draw 60 amps and see if it can handle that. And for the setup is as usual, I have a Variac hooked up to an inverter and I'm using the inverter to power a heater. Okay, let me turn on the inverter. And I want you to keep an eye on the CMS 101, the current meter here. And you can see we're drawing over 60 amps. I'm going to dial it down a little bit. Okay. 
I'm just going to let it run at 60 amps, maybe for a few minutes. And I have let it run for a few minutes. Everything is still looking good. And you can see that the BMS didn't really warm up at all. So that is able to handle the 60 amp current with no problem. And currently you can see that actually the whole run is at above 60 amps. So the BMS definitely has a margin built in. And next, let's take a look at how much overcurrent the BMS can handle in a short period of time. And for that, I'm going to use my electric drill. If you remember, the electric drill when it starts is drawing more than 1000 watts. So at the primary side, it will be more than 100 amps. So let's give it a go. And you can see that there is no problem powering the drill. So the DALI BMS actually worked quite well in our tests. Now I'm going to charge up the battery and see how well the cells are balanced. All right, I left it charging overnight, and I think it was done a long time ago. Let's start with the bottom one. 3.399. The next one. 3.389. Okay, there's a 10 millivolts difference, which is actually normal. Let's take a look at here. 3.379. Again, another 10 millivolts difference. And 3.379. Overall, I think the balancing result is pretty good. It's actually within spec. And here we are looking at the battery internal resistance. It looks like it's just around 7 milliohms. All right, I think the BMS replacement project is a success. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.